Chapter 1. The Ability of God Every born-again believer has God's ability abiding in him in the person of Jesus Christ. Yet few have ever learned to release that power. God is in you to the degree that His Word is in you. God and His Word are one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1 verse 1. The Word was God in the beginning. The Word is still God today. God's Word is Lord over every circumstance of life. Our minds cannot grasp these truths without the revelation that God and His Word are one. Jesus said, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it will be done unto you. John chapter 15 verse 7 We stagger at the love and faith which God has invested in humanity. If a man love me, he will keep my words and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode, our home, with him. John chapter 14 verse 23 The Spirit must be expanded by the rebirth to receive such awesome truths as Jesus spoke when he prayed to the Father. The glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I and them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. John chapter 17, verses 22 through 26. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 literally says Jesus was the exact expression of God's substance. He was the exact personality of God. I and my Father are one. Truth personified. The Word was God, upholding all things by the Word of His power. God released His ability in Word form, and it upholds all things. The whole universe stands in obedience to His words. God's ability is in His Word. We must learn to release that ability within us by rightly dividing His words. Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. John chapter 16 verse 33 Many of God's people are held in bondage because the enemy has perverted their minds to the great truths of the Word of God. God gave you His Word to put you over. He designed it to work in every area of life. His Word works, and it knows no time or distance. It is spiritual law. God's Word Rules God's Word is alive and powerful. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 It is living substance. It is law in the world of the Spirit. It is more powerful than the laws of nature that govern the universe today. The law of gravity works continually. You won't wake up some morning on the ceiling wondering why the law of gravity isn't working. No, you can rest assured that when you wake up in the morning, you will be lying down. You won't be lying up on the ceiling. Just that sure are God's spiritual laws, and they work continually. They work the same yesterday, today, and forever. They will never change. The Word of God says, God changeth not. God's Word never changes, but it changes things. Laws of God Let us take off our religious eyeglasses and look at some things that Jesus said concerning prayer. There are laws of God that govern and uphold all things. I want you to see that the laws we will be referring to are God's laws and they are spiritual. God is a spirit, and He created the universe. Everything you see has been created by a spirit. Now, sometimes people get the idea that this is the real world and the spirit world just somehow doesn't exist because they can't see it with the natural eye. It is like a fog out there somewhere. Many people believe in it like they do Santa Claus. 
The spirit world is the real world. This is not the real world. The word says, the things which are seen are temporal. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. In other words, they are subject to change. But the word of God liveth and abideth forever. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. God's word is a living person, Jesus, and abides forever. The reason you have eternal life is because you received the eternal word into your spirit, and he is life. The word is eternal, and he produces after his kind. Scriptural Bondage Today there are many Christians who have been deceived by the evil one. Satan is called the deceiver. His ability is in his deception. Jesus stripped him of his authority and power. God's word will always strip the armor from Satan and bring to light his deception. Deception is his only armor. God's word will penetrate that armor and expose him. Many are held in bondage by certain scriptures. Have you noticed that the devil tried to put Jesus in bondage by quoting scriptures? Now, the enemy knows a few scriptures, but he will quote them out of context to bring you into bondage. If you take scripture out of context, you can make the Bible say anything you want it to say. For example, the Bible says that Judas went out and hanged himself. Then, in another place, Jesus said, Go thou and do likewise. If you take those two scriptures out of context and put them together, you could say that the Bible says it is all right to go hang yourself. Well, some folks have. They have hanged themselves spiritually by doing so. Certain scriptures hold people in bondage because they seem to say things which they do not say at all. If you learn to rightly divide the word, it will produce liberty. It will also produce power and strength in your life. Just as food will produce physical strength for the body, so will the Word of God produce spiritual strength for the spirit man. We need to feast on the Word and be doers of it. It is written. On the Mount of Temptation, Luke chapter 4, Jesus spoke three words that shook the foundation of Satan's kingdom beyond repair. It is written. Jesus stood on a sure foundation and refused to speak anything except what his father said. Notice, when all else failed to move Jesus off the word, Satan himself began to quote scripture. The last and greatest of all deceptions is to take the word out of context and distort it to make it say something different from the true meaning. This was his double-barrel shot, his last-ditch stand. Cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. You will notice the enemy quoted it almost word for word from Psalm 91, verses 11 through 12. He drew it out of context to infer that Jesus could not commit suicide even by jumping off the pinnacle of the temple. Psalm 91 verses 9 through 13 is a beautiful passage of scripture promising protection from evil, plagues, and accidental destruction. But in no way does it apply to a willful act of self-destruction. In this, you see what I believe is Satan's ultimate deception to Christians today. He distorts men's minds with religious thinking that causes the very opposite meaning to be magnified and covers the true meaning with the garbage of intellectual reasoning. He has done this with the great truths that Jesus taught concerning prayer. He has a reason. Effective prayer will destroy his kingdom of darkness and release the ability of God in the earth. As the church of Jesus Christ comes to the knowledge of its authority in prayer as a joint heir with Christ, it will partake of his divine nature. Then shall the church proclaim boldly, It is written.